All right, you're on, honey. Come on. Today, we're making a great wine, cantaloupe wine. Look at all these cantaloupes and melons we got in front of us. <laughs> Stop. What? You're going to count these. You're going to count 30 of them. Yeah, right. But it's going to be a twist today because I'm going to show you how I like my cantaloupe when I'm eating it just plain. We're going to add a twist to this. This right here. Two. She's still counting. Four. Six. Nice smellings, honey. <laughs> Get right into this video. Make sure you like, subscribe, and click that notification bell. Oh, yeah. We don't got to stay friends forever. We can cross that line together. Find love, baby, never say never. After all this time. This is how you eat cantaloupe. You gotta put a little salt on there and then you gotta sprinkle a little pepper. This is the inspiration for this video. Ah, let's taste this. That pepper just enhances it. I hope it does the same thing to this wine. Now, we're gonna put peppercorns in this wine because you saw in the beginning here, I like fresh ground pepper on mine. The number you want to put in here per gallon is 10. Since we're making a three gallon batch, we want 30 of these. Now, a lot of people that make whiskey, they add peppercorns to make it taste a little bit stronger. It'll give it a little more heat, which is what pepper does. So if you want less pepper taste, just don't put 30 in. <laughs> Now they're all over the damn place. <laughs> Two. She's still counting. Four, six. You got 30, hon? It doesn't seem like it, but I do. Recount but... them quick. No. All right. If, like I was just saying, if you ever tasted peppercorns in your whiskey, most likely it has peppercorns in. Honey, what are you doing? Oh, I didn't think you were on me. I thought you were on that. No. Now, if you taste peppercorns in whiskey or any alcohol, most likely it does have peppercorns in. One of the old whiskey tricks is they add peppercorns to make it a little more heat, to make it taste like it is stronger than it really is. That's why they do it. So we got our peppercorns counted out. It is time to cut some fruit. All right, you asked for it and you got it. Instagram is here. Make sure you're following us on Instagram to see behind the scenes and what's coming up next on this channel. You'll be the first to know now. Linked in the description. Cut your melons in half and then we're gonna scoop the seeds out and then we're gonna cut it in quarters. You don't wanna put your rind in this wine. So there we go. Let's get the seeds out. There we go, removing the seeds. You don't want any of those in if you can. Now, when you're making cantaloupe wine, you want eat like two small ones per gallon. These are, I would consider large. Since I'm making a three gallon batch, I would want six small ones or a little bit less. So that's why I'm only gonna use five today. Now we're gonna just quarter these up or eighths, whatever's easier for you. This is just gonna make it easy to get the skin off. Now remember, when you're doing this, this will work for any melon. You know, honeydews, your watermelons. I got a whole video on just watermelon wines. So make sure you're checking that out. But this is like I said, it's gonna have that twist with a peppercorn in it. I can't wait to taste this. What about you, hon? Oh yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I'm not real fond of cantaloupe, but I don't like bananas either. And I love your banana wine, so. Oh yeah, this is gonna be so sweet with that cantaloupe. And then that hint of heat with that black pepper, it's going to be incredible. Now, always remember when you're making wine from fruit, always try and get organic. Now, the secret to this is when you get it off of the rind is to cut these little chunks because as we put that in the mesh bag, the juice will come out of this fruit. So remove the rind, cut into chunks. All right, there we just peeled. How many was that? Six. Five. five watermelons. Five. And if you did no. this... Cantaloupe. Five cantaloupe we just <laughs> peeled here. She did most of the work on this. But if you did this right with the measurements of the cantaloupe, you should come out with three to four pounds per gallon. So 
this should be what, nine to 12 pounds? And if it's a little extra, that's fine. It's just gonna be much bolder of a wine. Let's get the sugar dissolved on the stove and then get everything put together. Now, you all know we need sugar to make wine to turn it into alcohol. So I'm making a three gallon batch. You want two pounds for every gallon. So I'm gonna measure out six pounds of sugar here. There we go. Now, I got my stock pot here that we wanna get this dissolved. So here's my six pounds of sugar I'm gonna dump in. Now, a lot of you asked, how much water do you put in here? That doesn't matter at this point. You just wanna cover your sugar enough to make it into a simple syrup. So I'm gonna put this one and another one in. And here's number two. I don't have it totally filled. Like I said, just cover your sugar. This does not matter at this point because we're gonna dial in that ABV in one of the next steps. Get the heat on and let's get this going. And make sure you're stirring this. You don't wanna burn your sugar in this stage. So keep stirring this until it turns crystal clear. I'll show you that here in a second. So hopefully you can see how clear it is. I'm starting to see some bubbles on the bottom. It's crystal clear. That's when you're done. Shut off the heat and let this cool to room temperature. All right, so here's a th few things you're gonna need in your primary fermentation. Of course, you've gotta sanitize. Yeast nutrient, pectric enzyme, acid blend, Camden tablets, and wine tannin. Remember, I got links to all this stuff in the description. Now, one thing to be successful in winemaking hobby is make sure you're sanitizing everything. I got a complete video on this, so I'm not going to go over this, but I always mix a two and a half gallon batch of sanitizer with a half ounce of star sand and put all your equipment in there and let it soak a little bit. And make sure you have a squirt bottle. This thing comes in handy when we're dealing with the primary fermentation and we're stirring this each day. I won't give this thing up for anything. All right, the first thing we want to do is we want to put our Camden tablets in there, which looks like this. And we're going to crush them up between two spoons. We want one per gallon, so we're going to use three of these. Three Camden tablets for this three-gallon batch. The next thing we're going to put in is our wine tannin. This is just going to add flavor for your wine. We want a half a teaspoon per gallon, so we're gonna put three of these in here for this three gallon batch. The next thing we're gonna put in is our acid blend. Now, a lot of people ask, do you have to use this if you're making like a pineapple wine or an orange? No, you could leave acid blend out, but we wanna put a half a teaspoon of this in for each gallon, so we'll put three half teaspoons. The next one, which is gonna help our yeast bloom, is the yeast nutrient. Do not skip this. It's just gonna give your yeast a boost. We want a half a teaspoon for each gallon, so we're gonna put three halves in here again. And again, this recipe is for every wine I make. The uh, recipes for a one gallon, three gallon, and a five gallon batch in the description. But the last thing, is pectic enzyme. We want three half teaspoons of this, half teaspoon per gallon. Now the pectic enzyme, a lot of you have asked about this. You do not have to use this, but it will help clarify your wine. If you're using like a pulpy wine, like this cantaloupe is gonna be, it's just gonna help with clarification. All right, now you notice I always put the additives at the bottom and I just, that's the way I always done it. Could you put the water in, the sugar water in here? Yes. But the next thing we wanna do is get this mesh bag in here. And I got a whole video on this. If you're making wine from fruit, make sure you're using a mesh bag. And we're just gonna slowly add this in and then my wife, she'll just dump this in. I can hold this. Usually I don't have two hands, but this is working good. I'll hold the bag because you just don't wanna want it to slip in. And look at all that juice, it's already coming out. Heavy. It looks incredible. All right, let's get this tied up. Oh, we almost forgot the peppercorns. There's our 30 peppercorns. You wanna put them inside your bag. 
just like that. Now we'll cinch it up and we'll get our zip tie on here to close it up pretty good. We found a little hole in this. Yeah. This is the last time we'll be using this bag, but if we can get it below that, that's fine. That looks good. We'll just cut that cut excess that. off. Now here's our sugar water that's completely cooled to room temperature. And we're just going to dump that on top of this bag. Now we're going to add water to this. I know about where the water level is going to come up, but I just want to show you here what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to fill this up and add more water. So here's the water I'm going to add. I know this is going to come up pretty close to that top rim. But I'm just going to add a little. We're going to take an ABV reading to make sure you don't overshoot your mark. I want to try and get this wine somewhere about 12%. That's just where we like it. All right, now it's time. Remember, we put them additives at the bottom. This is the time where you want to try and get them stirred in the best you can. You want to get oxygen in the primary fermentation stage. So we'll just get this stirred in. And then we'll take our ABV reading and see where we're at. Now you can see as we stir this, do you see how brown it got? That's the wine tan and that will go away. So don't be alarmed that it looks like dirty water. Now we got our hydrometer. I don't know if you can see this, but there's one side that is potential alcohol. So when I said we're trying to get to 12%, that's right here. I guarantee you where it's at now, it's going to probably be over 20%. The water level, just from experience, is going to have to come up to here. So let's just see. That's actually 15%. So we don't have much to go. So I'm going to add some more water. We'll stir it in and take another reading. Just do this ever so slowly till you get it to where you want. All right, I added a little more water here. And we're just going to take another reading and see if we're close to our 12% mark. I'll get you a close up of this, but we're exactly at 12%. That's it, we're gonna stop. All right, that's it. We're gonna close this lid up and we'll come back in 24 hours. Do not put your yeast in at this point because you're just gonna kill it. Remember we put them Camden tablets in there. That's gonna kill the wild yeast. That's what you wanna get to at this point. She's struggling. I don't know if she's gonna get it. It's really hard. <laughs> Oh, that looks good. Here's the airlock. You want to make sure that's filled at the proper level. There's two lines on, on this one. There's two different kinds. This is the one I like. See you in 24. All right, so it's been exactly 24 hours. It's time to put our yeast in. I like this Red Star yeast because it's never failed me. And it's got a high tolerances for temperature. Now, you can see... We're not getting much action in here because we didn't do anything yet. So all I'm going to do is push this fruit down just because you want to keep your fruit moist in every stage of this. And then all we're going to do is add our yeast right wherever we see a liquid. One pack is all you need for a three to five gallon batch. If you're only doing a one gallon batch, all you need is about a half a pack, but I'm just going to use this whole thing. And there we go. Put a little over here. And we're not going to stir this at this point. All we're going to do is put the lid back on. We'll stir it the next three, up to seven days, because you want oxygen in your wine at this stage. Look at this. It's bubbling already. I don't know if you can see it there, but... I haven't even, it's been a, less than 24 hours, but I'm going to give it a stir anyway. So remember, we just put that stuff on the top. You can see it there. This is what you want to see, this foam. When you see that and when you smell it, it's working. You should smell this cantaloupe. Now that I'm getting this yeast mixed in, I guarantee you this is going to start to go crazy. Wait till you see this. So, like I said, we're going to stir this for the next three to five days. I won't bore you with all that. I'll show you some highlights here. But you can even see the foam inside the bag. We are making cantaloupe wine. Let's get this lid back on. We can give this whole town something to talk about. 
All right, it's day seven. You can see this thing is slowly coming to a crawl. So I know it's probably time to get this in our secondary. So we're gonna open this up and we're gonna rack it. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. But this was a fast rack. I don't know if I've ever had one in seven days. Usually they're above that 10, 14 days sometimes. And before we rack it, we wanna test it. We wanna check the specific gravity because we want to get that to 1.0. That means whatever our starting potential was, that's what it's going to finish. I think you remember, it was somewhere between 12 and 13%. So we're going to get this lid off and we're going to take our specific gravity reading right in this bucket. I can see uh, there's not much foam in here anymore. So I got my sanitized paddle. We're just going to move this a little bit to the side and drop our sanitized hydrometer in here. And this should fall all the way to the bottom. And I'll get a close up, but it is a little bit over the 1.0. So I got to get this rack because we're leaving for vacation tomorrow. It'll finish up in the secondary, no problem. So I got the sanitized racking cane. We're going to put that down in our carboy here. We're just going to get the siphon going. I'm thinking we're going to get more than three gallons out of this. But you don't want to stir it at this point. I got extra carboys in case we go over. It's already sanitized. Now, you're going to see, I'm just going to slowly lift this mesh bag and let it drip. Don't squeeze your bag. I have a video on that. Don't do it. There we go, it's draining out down into our carboy. Let's get a shot of that. There we go, look at that color. It's kind of almost like a cantaloupe color. I think it's gonna be orange when this is done. Now, our carboy is filled about halfway at this point. So I'm just gonna slowly lift this up and let it drip out of the bag. Like I said, don't force it. Just like that, I'll just hold it here. You could do something else to suspend this. I know some people will put a bar here and, and rig it up like that, but I think we're gonna just have enough for this three gallon. We might not need another one, which it is a three gallon recipe. That's gonna be perfect. Look at the color of this. Now, it's very cloudy because there's still yeast. It's gotta do some work in there but it'll clear up perfect, I promise you. So there you see it, that's the cantaloupe and pepper wine. I wanna smell this. Oh, you do smell the cantaloupe in there. I don't smell the black pepper, but I'm hoping to taste that. That wraps it up for part one. I can't wait to show you part two when we finish this. We racked this a couple of times and we're gonna taste it. And I can't wait for that. We had just enough for this. I might have had a half a cup. We didn't need our second one gallon jug. I thought we might get a little more out of this, but we didn't. Now you saw where I put that. I put this airlock on right away. Again, oxygen is your enemy at this point. But I just want to give this another sanitize. I already did this, but don't underestimate sanitation. It is a necessity to be a success in this hobby. There we go. We'll get this in a dark place. Until next time, making sure you're liking and subscribing. And I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Put your lips on mine.